It's wonderful to be with you again in our continuing study out of the book of Exodus. And believe it or not, like Moses is almost 80 years old as we encounter him today. And he is yet to meet that moment that he was born for in life. So there's hope for all of us, isn't there? And here's where Moses is going to be called. Perhaps God's calling you. Maybe a few of you he's even calling to a career change right now. Or for most of us, maybe he's calling us to reach out to somebody in a new way or to uh, join a small group or lead a small group or volunteer for a ministry in our church. God's calling us. He has purpose for our lives. You don't have to be 80 years old to reach that purpose. But we'll see the principles embodied in what Moses experiences. Verse 1 of chapter 3. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. So he's in the Midian desert. Uh, adjacent to Egypt, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Let's just note Horeb for a moment. That's going to be an important geographic reference point for many other encounters that Israel will have after Moses brings them out of slavery. And it's amazing in God's sovereignty. Where you are right now might be an important reference point for what you're going to need in the future. And there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. And Moses saw that Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it didn't burn up. So this is a supernatural moment. A bush on fire, but not burning up. So Moses thought, well, I'll go over and see this strange sight. Why the bush does not burn up. And when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. I mean, this is packed full. First of all, God does know your name. He knows your name. And he calls Moses by name. Nothing generic here. And and as he called him, Moses responded, here I am. I mean, these two phrases go together. God called. And we say, here I am. So that this is starting well so far. And the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. And I am concerned about their suffering. So now go, I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. This is the call. This is the assignment. I'm sure Moses gulped a couple of times. In fact, He's going to have an insecurity fit that lasts about a chapter and a half, but this is the calling. And I, I think it's always great to read, um, to read through Scripture, and on every page of Scripture, to ask ourselves, what clues to the character of God do I find on this page? And here we see several. We see a God who sees. He sees the misery of his people. And a God who hears. I have heard them crying because of their slave drivers. And a God who even feels, I'm concerned. God sees, he hears, he's concerned. That's true of God with your life and mine right now. So now, go to Pharaoh. And we're going to bring God's people out of slavery in Egypt. Well, Moses asks one of the obvious questions next. He says, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. Their fathers would have, of course, been Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, their ancestral fathers. And, and, and they asked me, well, what's his name? And, of course, Egypt had all kinds of gods by all kinds of names. This is a true and living God. But they're going to say, they're, they're going to want clarity on this. Like, what God's been talking to you here? What's his name? Then what should I tell them? And God responds, I am who I am. That is what you're to say to the Israelites. I am has sent you. I mean, this is powerful. God says, what's my name? First of all, you can't quantify me. Uh, Obviously, he's not going to say Jim or George or Fred. But neither can you quantify him like, like, um, you know, I'm, I'm the God of the ancient Near East. I'm the God of some other location like was so common in that time. Or, or I'm the God of the sun, or I'm the God uh, of the insect world. And I mean, they had gods for everything. He said, I am who I am. 
this is who are you to say the Israelites? I am has sent you. This, this, this name, I am, is related in Hebrew to the verb to be. And in essence, God's calling Moses to an incredible challenge that's way beyond him. And he's saying, whatever you need, I will be for you. Because this is all about God being sufficient. He, he is what we need. And to every need we have in our lives today and in the days moving forward as we follow God's call, God responds with, I am. I'm at, I will be all that you need me to be. And it's from this verb root in Hebrew, to be, that we get the name Yahweh. Or the Latinized version of the four consonants in Yahweh would be Jehovah. And in most of our English translations, Yahweh or Jehovah is simply translated, Lord. I will be all you need me to be. I'm calling you. It's beyond you. You're going to need my sufficiency, but I will be who you need me to be. Of course, we, we can't go on before just reminding ourselves about Jesus. Like, how would Jesus relate to the God of the Old Testament? And Jesus in, Luke, in John 8, 58, said to his critics, Verily I tell you, very truly I tell you, before Abraham was born, I am. Either that's very bad grammar, or Jesus himself identified himself as the I am that I am, and the God that appeared to Moses. So in light of God's calling and his promise to be sufficient for Moses, what might God be calling you to do? that, yes, would, in, would require his help. It's beyond you. Uh, maybe it would be a, great just to reflect that with our groups right now for a few minutes. What might God be calling you to do that will require his help? It's at this point that Moses' insecurities start cl clicking in like big time. And uh, the first issue is going to be the credibility question. Like, 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 they won't listen to me. Like, who am I? I mean, I mean, wh what do I do at this level of credibility? So in chapter 4, Moses answered, what if they do not believe me or listen to me? And they'll say, the Lord didn't appear to you. Then the Lord said to him, What's in your hand? A staff, he replied. So the Lord said, throw it on the ground. And Moses threw it on the ground, and it became a snake, and he obviously ran away, ran from it. And the Lord says, okay, I want you to go pick that snake up by the tail, and sure enough, it turned back into a rod. This was supernatural confirmation. He said, you know, they're not going to believe me. Moses saying, I mean, who am I? They believe me. Well, what if they don't listen to me? What if they say the Lord didn't appear to you? This was a supernatural confirmation. God gives him two more. Put your hand in your, in your cloak, pull it out, and it'll be leprous. Put it back in your cloak, and it'll be whole again. And then another one. Take some water in a bowl from the Nile, pour it out on dry ground. When it hits the ground, it'll be blood. So he gives them three supernatural confirmations. And, and th th this is to help him with the credibility. Y you know, when you're truly called by God, God's Spirit will just cause something to resonate through your life that will maybe even give you credibility you don't have on your own. But I just want to go back to this verse. The first supernatural thing had to do with what was in Moses' hands. I've got a stylus in my hand right now. He had a rod. And whenever it comes to say, God, I don't know if I'm, I'm able, you know, that's often the starting point. God just says, okay, what's in your hand right now? What opportunity do you have? What gifts do you have? Just let's start with what's in your hand. And often God's calling uh, begins there and moves on from there. And then comes the question of his competence. First of all, the credibility question. You know, what if they don't listen to me? And then comes the competence question. Like, I don't know if I can do this. So Moses said to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord, but I've never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant 
I am slow speech and tongue. Uh, I live in the Western world here, and uh, when you poll the American population, uh, it's amazing the high percentage of people that have a fear of public speaking. So th th this is one we all get, right? Um, he said, I'm not very good at speaking. So why would you call me, like, help me with this? And the Lord said to him, like, what? I mean, uh, Moses, who was it that gave human beings their mouths in the first place? Is it not I, the Lord? Look, I gave you a mouth, so I will help you speak. I mean, it's nothing for me to help you speak. I mean, the hard part was giving you a mouth in the first place. I can help you speak, and I will teach you what to say. Remember God had answered Moses' question, what's, what's your name? He said, I am that I am, that I will be everything you need me to be. I'll be your sufficiency. In fact, in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul said, God does some of his best work when we're weak so that we're not competing with him for the glory when he uses us. We, and so Paul says, I've learned to boast in my weaknesses, not, not to let them make me paralyzed in insecurity. And make, our insecurities not paralyze us. May we realize that who gave human beings their mouths is not I, the Lord. So if he created us, he can help us. But here's Moses' response. Pardon your servant, Lord. Just send somebody else. This becomes Moses' bottom line. God, I just don't want to do it. And here is where God comes to his bottom lines. For the very first time, the anger of the Lord burned against Moses. This is the first time. And we don't like that word anger sometimes. But the God who created us, he's called us. There's people he loves that he wants to touch through your life. Sometimes even in my life, it's like, why are you calling me? Why? You know, and, 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 and there's been times I've just sensed the Lord saying, you know, I love people so much that I'm even willing to use you in all your insecurities and, and all the things you're not great at yet. I love people so much that I'm even willing to use you. And, and when we just dig in our heels, um, God loves people so much that his anger begins to burn. I mean, I mean that this is like you get angry at a kid when, when they just keep disobeying you. I mean, God's anger burned against Moses. That's the first bottom line. And then mercifully, his second bottom line, it, it, his, he, God does go on to say, but okay, your brother Aaron the Levite, I know that he's a good speaker. So he kind of meets him part way. And, he, and he's angry that, that Moses would just refuse the call of God in his life. And yet he comes back and he says, okay, tell you what, if you'll follow me, uh, I'll send Aaron with you and he can do the talking for you. So this leaves us with the question, um, with God's call in your life, what, what are the insecurities that you're most vulnerable to when it comes to obeying God? Let's uh, discuss that with one another. Let's think about that. I mean, what are the insecurities? Uh, I would guess most of us have some pretty noticeable insecurities that, where we just keep questioning ourselves. When God's saying, I want you to step out. I want you to take leadership here. I want you to reach out to that person. Yeah, but who am I? And I'm not good at that. I mean, what, what are your insecurities? And, and how, might, how, how, how might the Lord be helping you to move forward? Maybe you're just digging your feet in and you're feeling that conviction of the Holy Spirit. Um, that, that's, that's Him making you uncomfortable. That's the Lord saying, I'm not pleased with what you're doing here. There's too much at stake. You, you need to be available to me for the sake of what I'm doing in the world. Um, or it may be just God saying, okay, okay, you know, I'll give you a partner or, or I'll, I'll help you in some way. Um, how might the Lord be helping you to move forward right now? May God bless you as we ponder on these things. Mm -hmm.